Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hey, if you're new around here, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really, really does mean a lot to us with every video we put out. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the 1660 Super and how it performs on Progpal. Let's dive right in, here we go. All right, first up, right out of the gate, I wanted to just talk pricing. One thing that's pretty interesting is the 1660 Super has held its price really, really well for new cards. It's been at that 229 to 239 US range pretty much since launch. And the same goes for the 1660 Ti. Both great buys. Uh, I really love both the cards. I've got several builds with the 1660 Ti and I love the 1660 Super. As a matter of fact, if you ask me, what would you build with if you were going to build a rig today it would probably be with the 1660 Super. Now that being said, in the March, April, maybe May timeframe, we could see a possible refresh on the 1660 Ti because it will have been almost a year since we saw that card release. Also in that June timeframe, we're looking at some new releases from Nvidia. So personally, while I'm eager to build rigs to push out into the new mining shed that we've got coming, I am trying to hold out as best I can to see what NVIDIA has up their sleeves in the next couple months. Now, that being said, if everything is on par with what is out today, I'll probably consider building with the 1660 Supers and the TIs. I just love the cards. I love the efficiency. I love the availability of mining multiple coins. And let's face it, frankly, the resale value on the NVIDIA cards, if you go with a decent model if you don't go, you know, kind of low end or something that's two, three, four years old, you get a really good deal out of your resale value. The last thing I wanted to point out is if you watched a recent Red Panda mining video, and I'll put a link to that in the description below, he covered the Z coin call with Ruben Yap and Christy Lee Minahan, where ProgPal was discussed. And on there, Christy laid out for the community an understanding of how ProgPal works. And in there, she stated something that I haven't thought about in honestly quite some time, is that ProgPal, really like any algorithm, can be implemented in a variety of different ways. So there could be different criteria by which when a project implements ProgPal, it could affect the performance, right? So that being said, just keep in mind that this is a simulation to get the best idea we can on kind of where cards stack up, but this isn't gonna be what you'll probably see in the wild. Maybe hopefully it's close, but it's probably not what you're gonna see with these different projects once they implement. Hey Raptors, okay, this is a quick insert into this video. I actually shot the testing that you're about to see several days ago and I had edited it and was about to upload it yesterday and so sorry for the delay getting another video out this week but it's for a good reason i as i was editing it and about to upload it i was using the information that was available from about a year ago from the ethereum community the same miner that bitsby trippin had used when he was doing his testing and all of it's really old if you google around on how to test progpal a lot of the instructions uh, that were available are outdated. The links are broken, the downloads aren't there, the pools that were offering uh, testing are no longer up, so it's just unclear exactly how to test. So I did this testing on the 1660 Super with the Legacy Simulator, basically is what it is. And I decided I'm gonna go ahead and post this video. I decided, I was thinking maybe I wouldn't, but I'm going to only because in my mind, I was interested to see how the results turned out. Now, that being said, I am going to do another video in the coming days on how to test ProgPal in 2020, okay? And the reason for that is, is there is a Twitter post that's public that you can see where I simply pose the question, what's the latest ProgPal miner? So that we could try to verbalize and make sure we're all on the same page. And it ended up into a much better, bigger discussion with Bitsby Tripp and Greer and Christy Lee Minahan on which versions we should be using, what block height we should be testing, how that compares to various hardware types, what the DAG file size should be, and those sorts of things. And when we test, how are we gonna store that data for the community to take a look at? That way it's useful. And ProgPal, I really, really believe, is very, very important to the community right now. So, I will release a video in the coming days once 
this conversation kind of plays out on how to test ProgPal in 2020 and how to share your data if you're so inclined, hopefully you are. But for now, we're gonna take a quick look at what I had compiled from legacy information and then keep an eye out for our new testing of all new hardware moving forward on ProgPal will follow the, the new protocol that I will share with you here in the coming days. So that being said, let's go ahead and get this video wrapped so you can see these results on the 1660 Super. Okay guys, let's jump in. All right, so here's the first test on ProgPal. Now this is live and I wanted to point out that you're gonna see this hash rate drop because I just started at about this 12.79. I just started the screen recording software. So what we saw with our results being around 12.72, 12.8 is really, really solid. And we are at that 100% on the power limit, zero on the core clock, zero on the memory. And our power consumption is about 120 to 124 watts. And we're just testing the out of the box settings here so that you can get an idea of what that would look like. We're running the drivers with 441.87. And our result was about 12.72 mega hash per second at 124 watts. And if we take a little bit closer look at that, so our TDP 100, 0, 0 mega hash per second, 12.72, 124 watts. And that puts us at 0 0.103 mega hash per watt. All right, so next up, we are testing 56% on the power limit. So basically we dragged this thing as low as we could possibly get it. Zero on the core clock, zero on the memory. And that puts us at about 70 watts, which is where I run my 1660 Super most of the time, as well as my TIs. And what that got us before we turn on the screen recording software was about 8.8, 8.69, we'll call it, it's a balances in there, something like uh, 8.65. And from a mega hash per watt standpoint, that puts us at about 0 0.124, which is better than what we saw with the out of the box settings. So now it's all about finding that balance in between. Okay, so here's the snapshot of that second test. And we were at 68.5, so about 69 watts. And that got us about 8.65 mega hash per second. So we're calling that 70 watts. We could drop that down a little bit to improve our efficiency numbers, but that brought us out at 0 0.124 mega hash per watt, which is right there. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. That is right there with the efficiency that we saw on the 1660 TIs. It's a little bit under that and some of the max efficiency we saw, but it's really close. I mean, it's right, right in the ballpark. And just notice how we drop that power down from 124 watts to 70 watts, improving that efficiency significantly here. But it's about what we've got to do now, since we've kind of got this low end and this high end of power usage, we want to find that sweet spot, kind of right in the middle of what we're looking for to get out of our hashing. All right, so this is probably the best result that we saw so far and we got the slightly higher hash rate when we didn't have our screen recorder software running but we were somewhere around that 11.64 uh, prior to this 11.61 you can see here i'll show you the screenshot that we had with 11.64 and what we did is we stepped it up to 75 percent on the power limit plus 150 on the core clock plus 850 on the memory and that put us at about 93 watts 94 watts and so what result did that give us? So we were at 11.64 mega hash per second. And again, so we're at 94 watts and we're at basically the same efficiency, maybe a tad bit more here at 0 0.124. But uh, the performance is really, really good. Now, I will say this, I did do another test as well. Above this, I bumped the memory up to 900 plus and uh, it worked for a while and then it became unstable and actually crashed my PC. So uh, it's one of the reasons I took some screenshots is to make sure I didn't lose any data to show you guys. So I'm not gonna publish any of those results since they weren't stable. So if I were to run with this today, somewhere in this range, the 90 to 94 watts on the 1660 Super is probably what I would go with. Okay guys, so just a quick bonus segment here. I wanted to give you one good look at the new protocol, the new miner that Greer provided and some of the instructions that we had running at the proper block height. Now, I turned on the screen recording software 
just after getting some readings here so that you see this dip that's down here at the 10.88. Keep in mind that this is after I turned on the screen recording software. So we were really around 11.3, 11.35 mega hash or so. So for what that's worth, I just wanted you to get a look at this here real quick. Um, and we are at about 90 watts. So maybe it's bouncing a little bit here, just a little bit above that, around 93 watts, 94 watts. And I took a nice conservative middle of the road uh, overclock for this test, which was 75% on the power limit, plus 50 on the core clock, plus 300 on the memory. That gets you above 90 watts on the power limit. Now this can go much lower down to that 70 watt range. However, one thing I do want to state is on the 1660 Super, it is a little bit more finicky than the TI when it comes to those higher overclocks. So once you start moving that memory up, at least with the model that I have, I was getting several crashes and I love the super you can push it pretty far but it seemed to be a little bit more crashy than the TI in my experience so that's why we're just doing this one test with a nice middle of the road moderate overclock here so there you go I mean we were at about 11.35 and again I will give you the protocols block heights all that good stuff in an upcoming video all right, now this is where the rubber meets the road here, guys. And what I did is if you watched any of our videos over the past year, you've seen that we've collected all of our data and we put it into this spreadsheet. Now this is the exact same format that I got from uh, BBT Carter. And by the way, he is the guru, the wizard of all of this material. The majority of the information that was pulled from a massive amount of GPUs was all conducted by Carter. So the community really, really owes him a lot and we can't thank him enough for that. And that being said, I'm gonna leave a link to the data that I've collected and using this format in the show notes below if you wanna take a look at it. Um, and this bounces up against all of the stuff that we've collected for the past year for full transparency. So you can see everything that we know of. Now, I've also collected some other results that you've seen on either other YouTube channels or on Twitter or Reddit or something like that that seems verif verifiable that we know to be correct. And those are in here as well and I'll point that out to you. Okay, so how did the 1660 Super fare? And here are my results and these are the three that I wanted to paint a picture with here in this data, even though we did some more testing than this. And we put in that out of the box hash rate that we saw at 100% on the power limit. And it was pretty poor efficiency at 0 0.1026. But as you saw, we continued to be around that 0 0.124, if you round up range. And the best result was around that 90 watts to 94 watts. So even when we bumped it up to 94 watts, which we dropped in that data right here, you can see it was all around that 0.124 range. Now, that's great. What does that mean exactly? Well, we saw last year that the 1660 Ti from a number of different algorithms had the best efficiency that was available. Now, it did get beat in some areas depending on what card you're looking at, but the key thing was the price point as well. So we took a lot of consideration on the price point of each of the GPUs. If you wanna do more of a deeper dive on that whole picture, please take a look at our video, the best GPUs of 2019. I know a bunch of you saw that, that was one of our best videos of last year. Uh, so take a look at that, we do a deep dive into all of this data. Now that being said, if we come up here, I've collected a few of the results from these people that we know and love. And BBT Carter, on his video, which I'll put in the show notes below, his best result was a 0 0.1564 on the 1660 Ti. And we had CMV Jax, which was a really popular Reddit post that a lot of people were looking at when this card initially launched, the Ti, that is. And his results were much closer to what I saw in testing from an efficiency standpoint with the TI at 0 0.132. So if you come back down here, you can see our EVGA card did well. I think our Gigabyte and MSI cards did really well. You can see here, we had our Gigabyte really close at 0 0.1471 mega hash per watt. Yeah, guys, I mean, this super, if you look at it, I mean, we're hashing right here at 11. 64 mega hash compared to the TI at 11.9 at 90 watts. 
So does the TI edge it out? It would appear that it does from all the data that we've collected. But what you've got to take into account when you're looking at these things is the price point because you can pick up that 1660 Super usually around $50 US cheaper than the TI. And if you end up buying eight or 10 of them and building a rig with them, that's a pretty good price point. Now, again, if I was building today, what would I build with? That's a very hard question. My first two cards I would think of would be the Super and the TI. And if I could get a great deal on the TI, that's probably what I would build with. But you can't deny these results. It's good to know if you've already got a 1660 Super rig, um, it's good to know what you're capable of in the future. So just be aware of all that stuff. It's very impressive results. Love what I see from a ProgPal standpoint. Okay, this isn't intended to be a big long ProgPal video. I do have a couple that I've touched on in the past. I did a recent update, which I'll leave a link on below. And if I remember it, I'll throw a card up right here for you to click on if you wanna take a look at that. Also look at our best GPUs for mining in 2019. We did a deep dive into all this data in relation to ProgPal. Another resource was Red Panda did a video recently doing an update on ProgPal and specifically on Zcoin. And he did a really, really good overview. Go take a look at that. Listen to what Ruben has to say in there. Listen to what Christy Lee Minahan has to say in there. There's some really good stuff. I'll put a link to that in the show notes below as well. All right, so that wraps it up for today. If there's anything I missed or anything I said incorrectly or any other testing you want me to do, please let me know. Leave a comment below and we will see you guys next time. Take care, Raptors. Bye-bye.